everybody, it's Sharon here. Welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time. Just a quick video today, or at least I think it will be quick. As you know, I've been using a tile to... I basically use it as my palette when I'm using paints or I've used it for distress inks or watercolours, um, lots of different things. I've used it for gesso and that sort of thing as well and it just is my palette and I've been using this size which is I don't even know what size it is it's just a, a tile and it's not quite eight inches or 20 centimeters and I think that's square yes so and I've had one here I've been using for a while and very sadly it had a little accident just recently and it broke i know sad face i was devastated um so i've been to the little shop where i found the tile at and it is a i don't even know how you would describe it i believe it's a second shop for building materials and that sort of thing and they have i think about two rows or aisles of tiles anything from floor to bathroom to kitchen mosaic tiles they seem to have it all and i popped in there i went in with my sad face and i wanted to get another tile i actually decided i wanted to get extra tiles in case anything like that happened again so i have purchased four of these when i had had this for a little while i decided that it would have been good to have more than one because Things like watercolour or distress inks, once you've finished using them, they will dry out and they can be reactivated with water. So I was like, I really don't want to clean my watercolour off my palette because I could put that aside and let it dry out. And then when I'm ready to reuse it, I can just reactivate it with water. So that's part of the reason I've bought a couple of extras and just to have some spares on hand in case I have another little accident so I was after white or as close as I could get to white because that gives you an indication of the true color of whatever you're putting onto your palette and I was able to get white in these smaller tiles again which is exactly the same tile as I used previously and because of my little mishap and a couple of times I've picked up my tile and it's felt a little bit fragile, I've decided to give it a little reinforcement underneath. So what I've done is I've attached a rubber mat to my tile and it actually feels a lot sturdier and somehow safer, I guess would be for want of a better word. Um, so as you see i've got two different sizes here and this large tile i did try and get one in a white but i wasn't able to find a white this was probably the closest i could find and i'm okay with that um i have a little bit of a a diy that i'd like to try and i was after a larger service surface <laughs> mm, speaking is not my forte um i was after a larger surface so and I've also covered that with, I don't know if you can see very well, with the rubber mat. And it actually became more apparent with this particular tile that I would need to reinforce it somehow. Picking this tile up, being a larger surface, it just felt so delicate. And now that it has the rubber backing on it, it actually feels so much sturdier. And obviously you still need to be careful, but... I just feel like it's a lot sturdier to be able to move around. And the other thing I like about having the rubber surface at the bottom is that for storage, I can now stack these on top of each other. When I bought these home, they were stacked on top of each other. And I had a friend who drove and I sat these on my lap and it felt like any little bump could crack the tiles. And then when I bought them home, I had to wash them because they were quite dusty. And I did that over my bathtub and holding this large tile while I was trying to wash it it just felt like it could snap at any moment so 
The fact that they have the rubber mats on means that I can either stack them on top of each other or if I had a space large enough I could possibly sit them sideways and lean them against each other and they have that protection between each layer. So I've got one here I'm going to do on camera just so I can show you what my method was and I've just got to move this out of the way. Excuse me for a moment. Okay, so before we get started, I will show you what I'm using. Um, I picked these floor tiles, they're called. They're interlocking floor tiles. I picked these up from my local Kmart quite a little while ago. I purchased them thinking that the kitties here could use them for playing on. And I've had a couple of extra packets just sitting around not being used and when I was trying to decide what to put under my tiles I thought this would work really well. Now as you see they're 62 in length by 62 wide by 1.1 um, depth I think that is. So they're incredibly large. There are four tiles in each packet and I have a feeling I only paid about $10 for them. So, as I said, it was a while ago, so I am guesstimating, but I know it wasn't a lot. So, makes this very affordable. And again, my tiles, I got four small, the large that you've just seen, and then the one I'm about to do, which is a medium, so it sits between the size of the small and the large that I've shown you. And I'll just pop that on the cupboard, on the, just pop that on the table so you can see. So I purchased all seven tiles for $7, I think it was. So not an expensive exercise at all. Now I have a piece of the rubber mat here. I've taken the smaller tile out of and it will be big enough to do my, my medium tile with. So I'm just going to... And this isn't necessarily always going to fit in camera. I'll do the best I can. Oops, and I've just dropped my ruler on the ground. Ideally, I should have cleaned my table off to do this, but sadly I haven't, so I need to work around some things, sorry. Now, the downside is this, this rubber does have a little bit of mess to it when it's cut, so, but that's okay. So I'm just looking at my edge. And the first one that I did, which was the small one, I'm going to lift these pieces off because it's easier without them on there. And I don't throw these out, I actually use these. I, in my previous craft room, my cupboard was very close to my door and I cut a couple of sections of this off and attached to the edge of my cupboard, which doesn't have doors, and it worked as a perfect doorstop. So you just never know what things will come in handy for. Okay, so the first one I did, which was a small tile, I cut it out first and then, so I cut the foam out first and then attached the tile. The second one I attached the tile first and then cut it out and I found that was an easier process. So I'm just going to scooch that across and I won't be able to get the whole thing in camera, I'm sorry. Um... Actually, what I need to do first is I do need to sit this down. So what I did was I just lined it up against the edge as best I can on both, both sides that are already basically cut. So across this edge and this edge, which is where the little tabs are. I just used a pencil and, oops, and I'm noticing you're not in camera and I just marked where that tile is sitting and then down this side as well now as I said I'm not cutting this out yet so don't be rushing for your cutting tool okay and then I know that on these sides I will have the edge of the tile that I can use and the little tabs so once I've done that I flip this over 
and lay it as close to my surface as possible. Sorry, I'm just scooching some things out of the way. And as you can see, I hope you can see, I have an impression in the rubber and that actually shows me where my glue needs to sit. So that's why I do that. And all I used was my fabric glue. So just the Helmars fabric glue. And I did the first one, sorry, I did the small one first because I wasn't 100% sure that the fabric glue would hold. And I wanted to do the small one because I have backup. In other words, I have more than one small tile. So, and it held quite well. So I went ahead and did the large and again, it's holding quite well. So here I go with the next. So I'm going kind of as close to the edge as possible, but I don't, oops, having said that, I don't want to be right on the edge is what I was about to say. Um, and I've got things to my right. So sorry for the noise. I find if I come across this way and go back the other way, my glue seems to come out better. And I don't hold it really heavy on the rubber, the rubber mat, because it does stop the glue flow from coming out. And I am giving this a squeeze as I go because I do want a reasonable amount. Sorry, I think I just bumped the camera. I do want a reasonable amount of glue on here. I'm trying to work as quickly as I can. Maybe I should have done the smaller one on camera. <laughs> it's a smaller surface to put glue on. And I am sorry if you don't have the full picture of the full surface, but it's very difficult to do that in the space I have. And then I go across. And then I go up and down kind of the full length. That's how I've been doing it. There's no right or wrong. It's really just trying to get as good a coverage without drowning it. And then on the tile, and I'm not going to be able to, or maybe I can scooch you over a little. So for the tile, I'm using the same process and I'm going as close to the edge as I possibly can and I, I'm sorry I know I'm out of camera right now but you will see in a moment. Just sticking as close to the edge as possible. And then again, I'm coming back across and coming towards the camera for the bottom edge. And then using a similar pattern, but you kind of need to hold the glue up, which I wasn't doing very well just now, up from the tile. And I am going to squeeze it a little bit harder over here because I am getting to the bottom of my glue, I think. Um... And just trying to pop down a reasonable amount of glue. Basically, I'm trying to make both surfaces tacky so that it has more chance of sticking to each other. I had actually considered not putting glue onto the tile, just onto the foam, but because the tiles have a textured bottom and each one has been textured differently, um, some more raised than others. Because it has that texture, I decided that popping some glue onto the tile surface as well as the foam was probably going to be beneficial in the long run. So... Okay. And I'm going to leave it there, just wiping away my strings.
and then I'm going to pick this tile up and I'm, you'll have to bear with me because I'll have to work sort of underneath the camera but kind of turning it around and I'm holding it between my fingertips as carefully as I can to not put my fingers into the glue too much and then I'm going to stop breathing because I can't talk and breathe at the same time oh that doesn't make sense I can't sorry I was holding my breath because I was trying not to wiggle around too much okay and then I'm just using my fingers so I'm going to scooch you back across this way just using my fingers across the edge to feel if I am in the right position and I need to bring that down so it feels fairly even okay and so just I do have a craft mat underneath here just trying to scooch it across the craft mat and I just want to press it down kind of waiting for that glue to take thinking my mat needs to go around this way sorry I'm just trying to get as kind of a flatter surface as possible okay and before that glue dries properly I'm going to just take my Stanley knife a craft knife may work okay as long as it's reasonably sharp and using the edge of the tile as a guide I'm just and as you see I have some excess glue there so I will just get some paper towel and do be very careful with your craft knife it's not something to It's not something to mess around with. You need to be very respectful of the fact that it is very sharp. Um, and obviously if you're underage, you will need to get help to do this. Okay, so... Just cutting... I've made my knife a little bit tacky with the glue, unfortunately. So I'm not going hard. I'm just going softly across each of these pieces of foam. And it cuts through slowly but neatly or as neat as possible. If you try and press too hard to go through all at once, it's not as pretty a cut, i found. Trying to hold my blade as upright as possible so as not to go at an angle. And as you can see, I'm getting quite the mess. Just moving those little pieces of rubber out of the way. And I'll see if I can turn this around for you. Probably not completely in camera, but not too bad, I'm hoping. And so the same process on here, but I can go across the whole tile. And I am just trying to wipe off some of that glue off my blade with some paper towel. Okay. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure to the tile too to hold it firmly on that foam in case it hasn't adhered properly yet. Okay, and that feels like it's gone through. 
and then I may just cut that piece off I think because that will be easier for me to manoeuvre under the camera for you. Okay, taking that piece away and then turning my tile around. Again, I'm going to cut this piece off just to make it easier. And my last edge. So again, doing these smaller pieces one at a time, I just find it easier. And again, I'm still holding pressure on the tile. You can probably see my knuckles turning white. That's what they tend to do these days. Okay, and that's the last one. So, I'm just going to pick up these pieces. Just brushing the edges of my tile and as you can see the foam seems to have adhered reasonably well that I'm actually picking up both pieces as a combined item now and I will just pop in my little bits of foam onto my craft mat so that I can brush them off into the bin my tile down sorry about that some necessary housekeeping just cleaning off my craft mat and there we have our tile already protected on the bottom surface and ready to use as a palette as I said it's a much larger surface than the small one I've been using but I do have some things I'd like to try so oh, I've just realized I'm really not straight with that camera I'm really sorry that's a little bit better um, so that's my tile it's now protected so I can stack it with the others to store and I can also lean it against another tile without worrying about it cracking or breaking the other tile um, which will certainly help with storage and it's nice and protected on my table as you can see my table obviously isn't straight or the tile's not straight we'll say the tile's not straight um, but it gives it some stability and so I'm, I'm wobbling the camera around now gives it some stability and firmness that it didn't definitely have before so I hope you find this useful. I find it a really handy craft tool. As I said, I've only been using the small one, so I look forward to having a larger one to play with. This is a, a better white than the large tile, but I'm excited to have different size choices as well. Anyway, I hope you find this useful, and you will see these tiles coming up in future videos as I start using them more proactively in what I'm doing. I hope you have fun doing whatever it is that you're doing. Happy crafting, everybody. See you soon. Bye for now. Just before I go, you may want to, and I'll see if I can get this under camera, you may want to go around and just press your edges together as that glue starts to dry on each edge just to ensure you can see that some of the glue is seeping up there just to ensure that it has adhered well around the edges and mine seems to have um, but I did do this process with the others so I realized that 
I had neglected to say that after I turned the camera off. So I thought I should let, mention that and let you know. Okay, I'll see you soon, everybody. Happy crafting. Bye for now.